thing anything to do with performance hmm. whether it's at work whether it is in sports or anything that you want to pursue there are two stories that are always there one is a story of possibility one is a story of limitation hmm. okay so it's a play between possibility and limitation always what are you preparing for when you sign up you're preparing the story of possibility as you start practicing as you start preparing for that as you start building up there is also a limitation that you sense it's so enticing to go out there run with the crowd you know people and you're pushing yourself and doing that it's a sense of achievement how many times at work do we have that sense of achievement how often do we get those highs and here you can choose where you can you choose get. where you where you get it yeah in the corporate sector the highs that you get in your work the highs are dependent on other people many times right okay so you're running a you're leading a project it's dependent on other people you finish certain things it's dependent on other people these are small dopamine hits that you, you know you have certain things to complete you do it but in this case it's dependent on you mostly the simplest way to look at it is does it sound like an excuse hmm how how's how am i feeling overall i need to watch for those signals from the body hmm. the mind most of the times is excuses you know right. it's it's stories i question it i don't feel like running today what is happening you ask an open ended question you will start finding those answers in terms of oh it's a weather or it's the time i think you slept late last night and a lot of these things that start coming up those are excuses right. and that's a different voice compared to the signals that come from the body i am venki you're working professional in it as well as an amateur masters athlete and a coach for endurance sports You are listening to the Working Athlete podcast. Here I talk to working athletes from all walks of life and experts from various sports to provide you with inspiration, training tips and lifestyle advice. If this is something that interests you, I have a small request from you. Please subscribe to the channel on YouTube, Spotify, Apple Podcasts or wherever you get your podcasts from. You can also let me know what you like and what you would like to listen to more of by commenting in the comment section on YouTube. I promise to do my best to improve with each episode and bring you the best content that helps you and me get better each day. In this episode I talk to Vinod Krishna. Vinod is a photographer founder and ceo of storytelling at work and a barefoot ultra runner i first met him in 2020 in tour of karnataka where he was a photographer and i was riding and writing about the tour it was fascinating to follow his journey in running since then in this episode vinod shares not just about his running journey but also about how he works on the mental side to become better at ultra running the tips he shared about how we can reframe our thoughts to work towards enhancing our performance both in sport and in life were invaluable in my opinion i had a great time and uh, had many takeaways from the time we spent chatting i hope you enjoy this conversation as much as i did this episode is brought to you by the bike affair if you are in search of a one stop destination that caters to all your cycling needs our today's sponsor The Bike Affair is the perfect place to check out. I have known the founders of The Bike Affair, Krish and Gokul personally for nearly 15 years now. In fact, my first century ride was with Krish back in 2008. They are both exceptional human beings and entrepreneurs that believe in providing exceptional service to their customers, and it shows. With over 14 years of experience, the Bike Affair has established itself as a trusted source offering honest advice and exceptional service. They are offering a special treat for the listeners of this podcast. You can enjoy a 10% discount on your first order by using the code BIKEYWENKY on their website. So if you are in Hyderabad, visit their store in Kondapur or if you are anywhere else in India, shop online by using the link the bike affair.com i will leave the link in the show notes now enjoy the podcast hi vinod hey venki good to well, be here <laughs> welcome welcome to the working athlete podcast it's a pleasure having you on the show thank you and uh, 
I'm happy that uh, we meet again. <laughs> and yeah, I'm happy that we meet again on this podcast, especially. Yeah. So the first time we met was uh, in 2020 on TVOK? Yes. Or was it 2021? 20, 20, 20. 21, I think. Okay. Yes. Um, and yeah, you were you were there as a uh, as one of the photographers uh, for the tour. 2020 yes. November is what I'm remembering. But uh, and you know, it was amazing. I, I think we we roomed for uh, on the last day. Uh, that was at Birchwood. Huh? I still <laughs> <Birchwood>. remember. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Yes. So I was, um, you know. Uh, you know, intrigued to learn that you were a runner uh, and uh, I've been following your, uh, because we stayed in touch on social media and I've been following your journey a bit uh, here and there. Uh, so I was curious to know, learn a little bit more about you and hence we are here sitting. Wonderful. Yes. And, <laughs> and I think we met at that bar uh, duathlon also. Yes. And, yes. Uh, I, I still remember clicking some pictures there. I also ran the 10K and, uh, you know, I, I did the run uh, mm. as part of the Dirt launch. It was, it was wonderful running there. Yeah. <laughs> One of my best runs, I should say. Right, right. Yeah. Awesome. So yeah. let us, uh, you know, start by talking about um, you know, what is work for you? What do you do? Okay, uh, I uh, run my own business. Uh, it's called Dusty Paths. Uh, I bring storytelling into organizations. Mm. So I help uh, people within organizations communicate better, lead better, sort of shape their culture better. So they're able to sort of build individual team and organization performance. Nice, yeah. nice, amazing. So, and coming to sport, what was your relationship with sport growing up, if any? Okay, um, a very funny relationship that I had. Uh, all through school, uh, though there were sports days and things like that, and, uh, uh, you know, I used to be part of it because there was no other option to be out of it. And uh, I never participated in most of the activities, you know. In fact, nothing, you know, even the stage activities or any, you know, co-curricular activities, I was never there. Uh, it everything started changing when I entered college. I joined NCC. I don't know why I signed up for NCC. Mm. And once I joined NCC, and we we had to run, you know. So if anything happens, anything, either you know uh, your officer is going to beat you <laughs> or make you run. <laughs> and initially, it was everybody who were made to run. You know those heavy shoes and uh, you know ill-fitting shoes, ill-fitting clothes, <laughs> and you had to run. And uh, this was in the afternoon. The parade would happen in the afternoon. Yeah. I think something changed at that point. And uh, I, I would probably uh, say thanks to the sergeant that I had. He was an amazing guy, you know, and he was into fitness. And I would say he was w one guy who sort of shifted the way I looked at myself, my body initially. And uh, I started sort of really enjoying, you know, you know, yeah, you want to fall out and do 10 push-ups. Yeah, I'm ready then, you know, so I started doing that. And that led me to uh, the sports, annual sports meet in the college. Uh, there was a 1,500 meter and a 3,000 meter run. Hmm. I had never run like that before. So I ran, I completed and they were noting things. I had, there were no, it, it is not so professionally done like how it is today, very organized. Hmm. Things happened and then I still remember my classmate Venkata Chalam just overtaking me mm -hmm. because he took a shortcut and somebody reported and he got disqualified. And I, I finished it and usually a few days later is when they sort of have a, a, you know, an, an event where they hand out the prizes. They called out my name and I came fourth in both of those events. Wow. I still have the certificate with me. Mm. And uh, that really was extremely motivating for me. Mm. And added to that, my cycling also started at that point. You know, So at, at that point at home, there was an old cycle that was there. Uh, and um, in NCC, they said, how we're going to go till Dordalagmara. So it was about 28 kilometers from the place that we all assembled. Mm -hmm. So we had to go and come back. 
so that day it really you know it was it was it was actually tough riding the bicycle of course traffic wasn't there the way it is today mm. so going there and getting back was was something very wonderful and uh, once i finished uh, my that was my 11th standard and once i got out of that and moved to the next level in college uh, three of us friends i don't know one of them was studied in kanakpura actually yeah, in mm. the government school mm. and he said i want to visit my school once you know uh, shall we go i said yeah how do we go let's cycle so three of us took these cycles and cycled all the way left in the morning went 50 kilometers and came back so uh, nice. i have done 100 way back i have never gone to a 100 kilometer cycling after that ever <laughs> i probably hit 50 kilometers but i've never hit 100 but that was a 100 you know i never realized and and especially kanakpura riding back was is is actually uphill a mm. lot of uphills that true, that you get true. and we were already exhausted mm. and it was extremely tiring we had to push the cycles you know and and there were no restaurants in between nothing small villages you know maybe you get something you know these small you know tin shops that were there couple mm. of them here and there right. and uh, we picked up chocolates or something whatever little pocket money we had yeah. and i think that really was my you know uh, i would say introduction to uh, fitness mm. and uh, i also started getting into calisthenics at that time mm. you know so uh, a lot of interest especially uh, uh, there were a lot of jackie chan movies that were being played right. so in the beauty about jackie chan movies was uh, he would actually show a lot of the workouts you know and we and like today you go to youtube you go you you got tons of stuff which you don't even have to subscribe you can get content you can get ideas you got people who share you got your podcast where people come and share things <laughs> and those times watching a movie oh okay oh this is how he's doing his strengthening uh, and on this is how he's doing his stretching his flexibility so these were things you know watch those movies and pick up things you know and um, and a friend of mine was learning martial arts he was learning kalari paito at that time wow. and uh, i would go and sit down with him and watch him when he exercises and you know pick come back and sort of build my own routine so uh, that's how it all began awesome awesome that's yeah. <laughs> sounds exciting <laughs> now uh, this uh, running in the current form right was it like uh, you once you have been active through college and stuff right ncc and then all these uh, did you kind of continue running or how how did it uh, go yeah running was on and off mm -hmm. um, you know i had a neighbor you know we both would sort of say okay let's just go for a run and um, just just probably i think i think about a couple of kilometers we never had measured anything in, in those days mm. we just go out and just say okay we'll run till the end of that road and come back things like that but nothing really very serious mm. i think what uh, but i continue to sort of um, you know uh, be fit uh, spend time every morning my morning would always even today it kicks off with a fitness routine I, I even though it's a light routine sometimes i'm on a rest day but i make sure that i have uh, i do something to do with my fitness mm. uh, physical fitness uh, and um, around the same time i would say somewhere somewhere when i started working uh, somewhere around that i was very intrigued with the the psychological part of our uh, mm. of our working of mm. how we perform how we do things so i started reading some articles and magazines and you know i started it was sort of a quest to sort hmm. of a search and uh, i i found that uh, you know working on the mental part of it especially when it comes to awareness when it comes to sort of pain management and things like that so these are things which i started exploring quite a bit interesting and uh, that took me to uh, you know somewhere it opened doors somewhere and uh, i did my um, uh, certifications in uh, in a branch of behavioral psychology wow. so i was able to sort of look at how we as humans sort of have belief systems how we sort of believe if i get up and think that i can step out and do this or can i do 50 push ups is it possible uh, uh, oh no 50 seems a big number what is a what is a good number so these are limitations we sort of set for ourselves i started saying okay let me play around with this hmm. let me put a number and start you know working towards it so it did a lot of these these experiments with myself mm. i think that really was helpful at that time though running i did not try anything out there right. but 
2014, around 2013, 2014 was when I started exploring running. Uh, you know, passionately exploring, getting out, you know, especially I, I moved to the Turali side of Bangalore mm. and uh, the, the roads Beautiful were empty, side. absolutely not like today. Yeah. It's, it's just the forest, uh, absolutely no one on the streets, no one on the roads, empty roads. And, and it was a joy just running out there. Right. And uh, that also linked to somewhere 2009 onwards, you know, even though I had done a bit of, you know, the fitness and, uh, you know, getting outdoors and things was there. 2009 was and 10 was when I, I started hiking. Uh, okay. You know, and I got out to the mountains and Western Guards and, you know, that really, you know, sort of, you know, I wanted, I, I loved the outdoors, basically. Mm. I realized, oh, I need to get out. You know, and that sort of started building up, you know, where every morning, you know, getting out into the Turali side, no one on the streets, beautiful. And especially Bangalore, it would rain in the night or, you know, early morning, yeah. and lovely roads. And you'd hear the birds, you know, just, just, you know, not many people, no vehicles. So I would love that. And uh, then I went on a Himalayan trek mm. and that shifted, you know, for me, it was like coming back. I was like, oh, I've tasted this Himalayan trek. Now I need to keep myself fit. So I started running regularly, you know, so I prepared oh. for the Himalayan trek a bit, ran those five Ks, you know, in, in whatever time, you know, try to sort of build that. But once I came back, I said, hey, if I have to go to the Himalayas, I don't have to start from zero. I can stay in that zone. Next time I get a break, I can always get out on a, on a five day hike or 10 day hike or whatever be the hike. Right. And even if it's Western Ghats, I'm, I'm fit. I need to be fit. I need to be in the zone. So I, I sort of realized that I need to sort continue that running base that I had set. Mm -hmm. So I would start running two kilometers, three kilometers every other day. And in fact, every day sometimes, you know, so I would start doing that. It, it became an obsession at one point. Mm -hmm. And that's how that, that thing picked up. Nice. So hiking was the main thing that kind of kickstarted your uh, interest in running we can say that yes. you know yes. to stay fit yes right so what you know how how did you kind of get interested in hiking and you know what, when you said 2009 10 is when you started hiking and stuff so how, how did it get started and how did that kind of progress into himalayan trek and okay. all that <laughs> okay so uh, it goes back to uh, my days in uh, when i used to work with motorola then mm -hmm. as part of a six sigma project and we had an offsite in lonavla uh, so we finished, the, it was a four day uh, workshop that was there and we finished all of the workshop, the training, all of that. And we were supposed to leave the, the day after. So the next day, some of them gathered and said, hey, we're going to, learn, learn, we are in Lonavla, so we're going to go down, uh, you know, this mountain and, you know, get down there into a ravine base, into a valley basically there. Mm -hmm. And it's very rocky and whatever. So I said, yes, I'm game. Let me go, go ahead with them. And that was, I would say, sort of the first experience that I had where I used to be an outdoorish person, but I never realized that I can, you know, these mountains, is, uh, you know, I can taste these mountains and they really are delicious. Right. So I got out there and... And, and getting down there all the way and there was a stream flowing, it took about a, almost about a couple of hours to get down. Hmm. And there was no path as such at many places. So you had to sort of hold rocks, get down and things like that. And getting back up was also pretty challenging. Hmm. But that really was one, I, I, I still remember that was a, you know, I would say a game changer for me. You know, it's like outdoors, I, I started really relishing it. And as part of the Six Sigma project, I went to the US and uh, there in, uh, you know, in the Grand Canyon. Hmm. So uh, I, you know, did, did I hike there, uh, even though we had about half a day only, you know, because we, it was part of a planned tour and things right. like that. So we were... We were given a turnaround time to say, yeah, you need to report back at this time. So I, when I went there, I saw a lot of people hiking down or hiking up trek poles. And, you know, they were really, you could see they're really fit. Yeah. And they know how to sort of navigate the the paths, the trails, the mountains. I think that that really triggered a lot of, lot of uh, you know, I would say passion for outdoors and mountains. Amazing. Yeah. And then you kind of uh, ended up, the Himalayan trek kind of ended up in your uh, uh, list of things to do and you that 
kick started your yes. uh, interest in running and stuff right yes. so uh, then how did once you got into running as in you said you, you just wanted to maintain that base of fitness right. so so that you are ready for these treks whenever they are are uh, there so w- w- did it kind of stay around that the three kilometers five kilometers kind of thing or did it uh, how did it progress to say what you are doing now what what was yeah. that path like <laughs> yeah so uh, i think i think for the for about a uh, couple of years it you know or i would say about a year and a half it sort of once i came back from the himalayan trek it sort of tapered off mm. and then i built it back again you know and and uh, it used to stay around the three four kilometer mark and uh, i there were not many events happening at that time mm. you know it is not like today you just go out on a weekend there are 20 yeah. runs that you can uh, opt for you know can choose what you want to run and and uh, i still remember there was some urban stampede somewhere you know the puma urban stampede 5k and uh, i i i registered for that and that i would say i had run a 5k earlier but this was the first Time organized day. timed event organized run that i actually ran 2016 mm. uh, and once i ran that i said okay now five done so i was easily able to do this now i think i should try and see you know push the limit and see 10 you know 10 what happens and then move to 10 and once i hit 10 i think uh, i said i think 21k is the thing you know i started seeing things reading things and said okay i can probably push my limit and again it goes back to that thing of every every year i found myself um sort of pushing the boundaries on some aspect of my life mm. uh and that is the mental game that i have sort of i would say have practiced and built play with that you know yeah so f- the first thing is it you know when you think of an ambitious goal it always feels overwhelming or it's always you start feeling oh that seems too big you know will i be able to sort of go and go and hit that am i stretching myself too much you know these are thoughts that will usually you know crop up hmm. so what is it that i need to do to sort of settle those things not to say yeah you could be a david goggins and say shut up and just go through it that's one way of doing it but how do you sort of negotiate with your own self to align your thoughts better align your energies better and sort of cross those you know perceived limitations right. that you have in mind yeah. so i i started that is that was one of the key drivers for me to sort of explore okay let's explore this what happens mm-hmm. and then i signed up a ktm kaveri trail marathon and i did that 21k and that, and that was that's a trail also but the morning sunrise and the the canal over there the beautiful route lovely yeah. route and i said oh, wow this is great and uh, once i started doing you know those half marathons i think i i was i was i was really pumped and i said okay uh, now where are these full marathons <laughs> and and trot was happening at that time that was in the turali area uh-huh. uh, i had seen those trot guys when i used to practice and uh, they were that's a runners run you know uh, the raramuri run is a runners run and uh, i saw the volunteers are so enthusiastic about cheering everyone i was not part of the race but i saw that was i was running on their road that was my home ground running there every morning and these guys were like ha come on have some electrolyte have some bananas and they were cheering for me i was like whoa this is this, you know this is wonderful and i signed up for a full marathon a trot full marathon and usually you know and i i wasn't aware that people usually sign up for the full marathons where there's a f- flat terrain and things like that this was rolling terrain of course and, totally right <laughs> yeah and and it it was tough mm. but i was able to sort of uh, cross the finish line well in time you know good timing you know and 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 once i did that i said oh now this is possible <laughs> and i did stupid stuff after that <laughs> i started <laughs> signing up every two months there is a full marathon i've signed up in one year five full marathons wow i i was burnt out and i'm like what is this my timing is the same is not really improving i feel very tired what am i doing and and then it hits you you know it's like yeah you need to slow down you know to... which year was this? this was 2017 mm-hmm. 16 17 was when that that happened right and i think i think after that 
I have slowed down. I've been very picky with what I do. How do I progress to the next thing? How do I prepare my body to and my and my whole system to sort of get gear up for a specific, uh, you know, uh, target or a specific result, specific race. Mm. So I started working after that. That was a good lesson, you know. Right. I, I remember, uh, you know, I I met. I was talking to Bobby, uh, barefoot Bobby, right. and I said, you know, I made this mistake of five. I just signed up randomly for five marathons in here. He said, "Oh, that's painful." <laughs> that was his reaction actually. <laughs> like he made a face and said, "Oh, that's painful." <laughs> yeah. And and uh, without adequate, you know, rest or, you know, you know, strengthening and, you know, I I I think that was also a discovery of, you know, what I'm doing, you know. So and and uh, I think that the huge lessons from that and then I started making that shift into nice. uh, more sensible decisions in that. Right. Yeah. So when when you uh, did this, yeah, right, as you rightly called, uh, you know, stupidly standing yeah. up. <laughs> or, you know, but I see many many people tend to do that, you know, initially yes. that enthusiasm and all that, right? But at this point of time, were there like any uh, structured plan that you put for yourself? How did you go about training for these half marathons mm -hmm. and marathons? Yeah. So uh, I I have I used a, a structured plan initially. I think I, in those times you just Google up, you would find a, a half marathon plan and a full marathon plan. Right. I started referring that. I tried it. It wouldn't work because you know that is specifically it. You can't use a generic plan and say, "Ha." Huh, you go ahead and you know practice this and use this and and then build up your thing it works f to some extent mm. but i think there are a lot of other factors that play out there and uh, specifically strengthening you know your rest days are so critical your cross training is so critical mm. and and how do you sort of sort of uh, eat well how do you sort of hydrate yourself when do you hydrate all of these are i would say discoveries you have to for me it was that was that was how i approached it mm. Uh, though I used some of these plans uh, initially, I think I think it was not very structured as what. When I look back at it, mm. I thought I had a structure, but it is it was actually a poor plan, is what I what I see. Mm. Uh, you know, yeah, and and a lot of the learning I would say those days. You didn't have too many coaches around. You didn't yeah. have too many people. You know, everybody was still, it was still nascent. The mm. whole running scene was also nascent a uh, few years ago. Yeah. So uh, you'd Google up things, you'd see YouTube YouTube, and sort of see what's happening, what advice is coming in. In fact, one of the half marathons in Mumbai, I, and you know, this was supposed to be a heritage route and they didn't get permission. So they shifted that to the BKC. And I I signed up because it was supposed to be a heritage route. It was BKC and BKC is all concrete roads and huge buildings. So running in the midst of huge buildings is no fun. Right. And it, ra it was raining crazy. Hmm. I At the 17th kilometer, I had severe pain, you know, in my knee. Hmm. And uh, I was, I struggled to the finish line somehow. Right. And then I realized... I was not strengthening well. My, that was an IT band issue that I had. Oh. You know, so that was a wake up call, I should say. So I would say it was not very structured as mm. such. Mm. I thought I had I got a good plan. You know, I put myself, a, worked myself into a good plan. But I think I, a lot of mistakes at, I would say, initial right. days. So yeah. what what would, uh, what were those mistakes? Well, you know, if you compare your structure there, yes. then to what you're doing now. What were the key differences and what, uh, you know, uh, what were the learnings from then to now? Yes, um, uh, the first thing is to, is to sort of, I would say, build the right base. Yeah. I think, I, I thought I had the right base. I, I don't think I was good with that. So, uh, you know, just because I'm able to do a 5K, okay, go and do a 10. Hmm. And now go and do a 21. Oh, what next? So 42. So if you if that is the way you're going to measure your progress, and uh, that is that is a that is a I would say is a, it's it's probably a wrong way of doing it. Right. So I what I have changed I have learned from that is to look at if I'm crossing if I'm getting to this how what is happening now you know so how do I review this how, what are the learnings I have and now if I'm going to move from a let's say a 5k to a 10k or 10k to a 21 or whatever 10 to 15k right. for example mm -hmm. what is it that I need to do to get there. Mm -hmm. 
you could go out and push yourself and do that one day mm. but is that what you are aiming for right. what is the long term game that you want to sort of play so mm. i started looking at that mm. and the other side is there is a, there is it initial days with all of the 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 josh that is there mm. you can easily burn yourself out so right. that is something that i'm very watchful of mm. you know so uh, i make sure that let us say there are i have i have put up my own plan to sort of go out and do a long run on 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 a weekend i'm preparing for some race mm. i if that sunday saturday or sunday i feel i think i need to sleep today i skip that run okay. i will move that to another day mm. it's okay but i don't want to hurt myself injure myself or make myself injury prone mm. or burn myself out right. so that is a big shift that i see right. which is you know there's a lot more awareness of what is happening mm. the other part is that in terms of my hydration and nutrition mm. you know so i'm very watchful of that now what am i taking in you know in the sense i'm not restricting things you know and i'm not saying oh i'm not going to eat sweets or desserts and things like that but i am watchful i I'm, i'm listening to my body much better now right. you know compared to how i was earlier you know it's like oh i'm i feel hungry so eat hmm. you know oh i yeah, eat eat things and and keep moving so that i think i am more watchful of balancing my diet a bit more not very very calorie conscious as such i can i you know i think i'm more tuned to my body now i listen to my body more keenly mm. compared to how it was earlier right. so i'm paying attention to one is my body resting what's my condition and i also there is a there is a very subtle thing there where there are times when the mind plays games and yeah. most times you know when i get up in the morning it feels like uh it's cloudy or oh it's already late uh, sun is out you know, should you run maybe tomorrow skip this and things like that so is that the mind playing it or is this your body really feeling it you need to be able to sort of listen to that voice right. i think initial days even though i had some bit of awareness and things like i work on that but i think i had not applied that or extended that into my running uh, space but now that is something i watch for is that the whose voice is that yeah who's speaking yeah <laughs> and i am able to catch that and say all right yeah i know just step out and once you step out one or two kilometers you are in the rhythm and then things happen right. so i i need to different i am able to differentiate between whether it's the mind playing that or it's the body really you know telling talking you telling to you yeah, yeah to to sort of take that break so what w- w- how do you differentiate it is a tricky thing right yes it is always like uh, i mean i feel like i need rest but is it actually the body like you said body telling you or the mind telling how what what are the things that you would look for to identify that i think uh, the simplest way to look at it is uh, uh, does it sound like an excuse hmm yeah so if if at all it is about is it is it about you as a thing there is a sensation in the body um uh, is is there something you feel the energy flow is not okay so i get up and you know let me get up and do my morning warm up routine and i'll see how my how's my breathing how's my heart rate how how's how am i feeling overall uh you know do i feel i have not had enough hydration am i feeling hungry is it because that i have i've eaten probably something last evening or night and i maybe i'm a little more a little hungry now so i need i need to watch for those signals from the body mm. the mind most of the times is excuses you know right. it's it's stories yeah so uh, i always look at the, i watch for those things you know it's like yeah it's saying yeah i i question it i don't feel like running today what is happening Mm. you ask an open ended question you will start finding those answers in terms of oh it's a weather or oh, it's the time uh, or oh, i think you slept late last night and a lot of these things that start coming up those are excuses right. and that's a different voice compared to the signals that come from the body oh that is beautiful yeah that if it is a sound if it sounds like an excuse then you can you know that's a very useful uh, way to look at it. yes yes yeah <laughs> brilliant brilliant also uh, you told right the, um, you know when you are signing up for uh, 10k you know then uh, going to 21 42 your mind is ready for those challenges yes yeah. but is your body ready yes, yes. right yes that is very important to uh, you know gauge and 
plan the, the plan your body to be ready correct right correct so get that uh, base for your body to get better at those distances so that you can make that jump to the next one yes be it strength be it more mileage but gradual build up yes. is what is needed right yes i uh, am basically reminding myself uh, of all this okay. because <laughs> <laughs> you know when it comes to running these are all the things that i uh, you know ignore yeah. so and we are paying multiple prices multiple times so that's okay. <laughs> <laughs> yes excellent beautiful so when it uh, uh when it came to you are done like f- five uh, marathons uh, in a year and burnt out and all that right so from then onwards how did you kind of pivot and say okay how did you take things forward from there to where they are now Yes. Yeah. So the first thing, while while I realized that I was I was overdoing that, like, and as you rightly said, it's a mind. This excited, you know, the ideas are there. Oh, I can run this. Now I can run this. Now I can run one more. Oh, this this is giving me that uh, hit, that high, and I need to, you know, let me get it again. You know, so it starts getting into that that obsession, and I think uh, once I realized that. you know and i was hurting myself um, and, and and quickly i think i'm fortunately i realized it much quickly uh, and i slowed down after that mm-hmm. in the sense uh, it it was a negotiation with the mind it's it's really tricky there again right you know because you are you it's it's so enticing to go out there run with the crowd you know people and you're pushing yourself and doing that it's a sense of achievement you know and um how many times at work do we have that sense of achievement mm. uh, i used to work in the corporate sector at that time so mm-hmm. uh, how often do we get those highs and here uh, you know you, you can choose where you can you choose get. where you where you get it yeah in the corporate sector the highs that you get in your work you spend a lot we spend a lot of hours at work yeah. the highs are dependent on other people many times right okay so you're running a, you're leading a project it's dependent on other people you finish certain things it's dependent on other people these are small dopamine hits that you, you know you have certain things to complete you do it but in this case it's dependent on you mostly right and i think that is the thing that i understood mm. that i need to stop sort of not really the mind says that but i need to listen to the body much more mm. than what i'm doing now and right. and i slowed down after that mm. and i think 2018 was a year pivotal year for me for that you know that that really i slowed down i i, I actually i was traveling also mm-hmm. so wherever i would go so i was in uh, dallas i was in new york so i would go and i i initially every time i travel i would sign up for runs i would look up and say i uh, when i was in australia i said oh there's some cross country 21k ah go run it sign up this sunday anyway i'm there let's go run and uh, it was nice to run in those places but over there in in the us i said no i'm not going to sign up for any races mm. i'll just go run for the joy of running all right i started changing that mm. i started slowing down and uh, initially also you know especially in in running what happens is that the the uh, uh, pace can become a critical factor yep. it can be that and it's a never ending game at some point right. you would want to say okay i've done this now four four hours now sub four yeah for, oh another 10 minutes off you know another one minute off you start chasing that i'm mm. not saying it's not good it's mm. good numbers are good mm. whether it's business or in, in sports numbers are really good but what are you taking out of it what are you doing that for i think so those questions i think that was critical for me at that for 2018 it it really i started reflecting on a lot of that mm. i slowed down i took a couple of steps back and said okay let me review what's going on right. what am i running for you know so once i did that i was able to sort of slow down you know though i ran a couple of long distance runs that year you know signed up and things like that but i slowed down that year mm. and i was able to that really helped me sort of build up for 2019 mm. 2019 was when i did my first ultra so uh, when i was signing up and when i prepared for it i felt very confident right. earlier there was the josh the mm. rush that was there go and do it here i felt very comfortable actually going and doing that though the last 
four five kilometers of the ultra i struggled it was sunny it was hot it was it was a mind game totally there how long was it another 50 kilometer run right. and uh, the last eight kilometers it and i i sense that because the there are hardly any people in that last stretch mm. and you're by yourself you know you, that starts you the mind starts playing games over there again mm. you know what am i doing what's going on oh you're tired oh your water bottle is almost empty oh where's the next hydration station is all of these things the sun is hitting you it's it's uh, 12:30 in the afternoon hot sun so i i i felt i was able to sort of manage that quite well mm. you know though i struggled i was able to manage that and that i attributed to the slowing down of the things right so i found that thing of if i have to run fast i have to run slow if i have to run long i have to re- reduce the number of runs ah. i don't have to sort of run every other day i used to run every other day every day almost you know 5 6 days a week and things like that i started slowing down In fact now even now I run at least maybe about 3 times a week mm-hmm. so I've reduced that spent a lot of time in let's say strengthening and sort of doing those stretches and relaxing the body and also working on the mind the mental part of it so those two things are something which I think that shift happened in 2018 for me Oh nice yeah. so if you have to if you want to run fast run slow and if yeah. you want to run far <laughs> reduce the run, number of number of runs you could you could still you know slow down and go longer distances maybe mm. you walk yeah it's okay but how do you build that endurance right how do you build that endurance and you know and earlier you're trying to sort of every other run you know every weekend you're trying to say ha huh, my timing is this oh i need i'm doing this long run oh i'm i need to keep that pace and things mm. like that now i i discovered that 2018 especially mm. and 2019 i don't have to sort of run at race pace every time you mm. know so yeah you slow down you know slow down during your practice runs mm. it's okay that's not about timing there your performance is on race day and not not during practice right. but in practice what is it that you push what mm. are the aspects that you need to sort of build up for mm. so i started discovering a lot of that those aspects and that really helped me sort of shift away from that frenzy mm. the mind was driving me on right <laughs> what are those aspects that you push on in practice um there are two primary things that i that i look at so the when i when i look at the 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 anything anything to do with performance mm. whether it's at work whether it is in sports uh, or anything that you want to pursue there are two stories that are always there one is a story of possibility one is a story of limitation hmm. okay so it's a play between possibility and limitation always now what are you preparing for when you sign up you're preparing for a with a possibility or with a story of possibility now as you start practicing as you start preparing for that as you start building up there is also a limitation that you sense what is that limitation that you sense you know so are you preparing for do you understand your own limits given your time given you know, we are not professional athletes we're not kipchoge kinds who who are dedicated their life is dedicated to running so they have got the ecosystem around them so but as you know athletes who just enjoy recreational athletes we just enjoy running So how do you sort of look at this limitation the story what's the story of limitation that you need to sort of push explore and understand how how much can i push myself mm. what is possible what's not possible and for making that possible what is the preparation i need to make so the preparation also comes into again two parts that i see one is the physical part and the mental part mm. and these two have to go together is what i you know understand you know strongly uh, i believe that that if you're physically ready but you're mentally not ready or mentally ready physically not ready your performance is going to suffer mm. how do you align how are you going to be in congruence to sort of take this forward together how, how does one align those mental and physical preparations yes yeah so uh, when it comes to the physical part of it you're prim- primarily working on work with your body Mm. you're working with your body to sort of say okay i'm going to build up strength i'm going to build you know start running faster mm. i'm going to you know do intervals or you know i'm going to go let's say do some cross training mm. so these are things that you sort of do to build the muscle you know or or even i'm going to have rest days so you're working with the body out mm. there right 
you have to do the same thing with the mind mm. so there are runs i specifically look at look it's not about timing it's not about physical whatever take as many breaks as you want you walk sit in between eat chat with friends do whatever you want but it is about staying on your feet what happens to the mind mm. this is more a mental exercise than a physical exercise right so that is one thing that i focus on uh, one is one is active activity mm. you build your activity to sort of build your mental muscle right the second part of the mental aspect is more to do with the self mm. how do you build your awareness how do you sit with yourself and when you think of that that's where i talk of the the story part of it in the mind right. you know what is running mm. what are the thoughts if i think of that race if i think of running what comes to my mind at that time i'm preparing for this what does my mind tell me mm. so the more i'm aware of it the more i am able to sort of understand what is what are those possibilities there what are those limitations of the mental system that we have mm. so i start i you have to you have to tune into yourself for that is what i believe right. so i i spend time to sort of tune into myself sometimes it happens during a run also i run most times i run by myself right. you know so it's very meditative so after a point i know i'm just going with the rhythm you know it's just there i'm not i'm not really chasing a number or this one i'm just going and then the thoughts you start watching the thoughts mm. what's happening what's coming up what's coming and then you know oh this is something you know this is a critical thing out there this is it's telling me something out there you start paying attention to your mental system and not just the physical system alone mm. so i think building up that that awareness is very it's that's that's a, and how do you build that awareness is again you could do you know just breath work itself mm. will help you sort of you know help you pay attention to your breath or yogic breathing that also helps doing yoga stretches slow yoga stretches let us say you're doing a surya namaskara just do just do one but completely aware mm. and just aware of paying attention to where what muscles are engaged what's happening what thought is coming how am i breathing what's happening the more you start paying attention to that you're more in the present you know mm. i think for especially for endurance running building up that if one is how do i stay on the feet and go long distances and and endure that how do i endure the mental part of it right because the mind can take you anywhere especially on on these ultra runs you can go it can take you anywhere you'll hallucinate you'll you'll imagine things you'll start reading things and before you know you you know something has already hit you right. the body is sending signals mm. so how do you sort of make sure that you bring it back you you watch that and say oh, hold on there's a game going on there right come back to the present right. so that getting back to the present is the critical part of the mental endurance game mm. i there's so much there right to unpack the the stories that you tell like the story of possibility versus the story of limitation uh, i mean when i think of any uh, race or result it always aligns to that story yes right yes <laughs> automatically if you sit back and say what is what is the dialogue that is going on in my mind at that point of time yes why did i sit back you know and let the group grow go right what what was the story that i am telling uh, i was telling myself That's at that point yes. of time it's always comes down to that yes right? yes so fascinating yes, so yeah. fascinating it is yeah yeah, yeah. it's it, i know when you start watching that especially yourself it's very fascinating to you know it's an exciting game inside right. you know that is going on you know while your body is running moving all of that is happening the game is going on inside you know right. and the commentary is going on inside yeah. possibility limitation yeah what is that play yeah and also you uh, if once you are aware of that you know when you bring that awareness to that internal dialogue and say like hang on you know uh, you know you i i'm the dialogue is saying that okay i'm i am about to give up right what, what you got to negotiate with that right yes yes i say oh just hang on you know just go to that sign post and then once you get there yes go to the next sign post yes right yes. that is the that is the negotiation there right. and if you see that's again a play between possibility and limitation right you're constantly negotiating okay let me get till there let me get to the next hydration station yeah let me probably oh 800 meters yeah. oh let me get there oh another 2 minutes okay on the clock okay let me do that and that is what you're playing with constantly mm. Mm. and 
the more you're able to do it when you're you know you've you've you know you're tired let's say tired legs you've run a long distance and how do you sort of say okay now i'm going to start walking or now i'm going to rest mm. i'll take a 2 minute rest and then i will resume again or a 1 minute rest no i'm going to stop at this hydration station and 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 probably you know sh- what, should i have water or electrolytes should i eat something or not how do i eat so all of this preparation is a mental preparation required also right. not just a physical preparation the body is asking you know uh, at the 9th kilometer start having something or after 5 kilometers or 3 kilometers have water oh the weather is like this have more water these are things you can plan for hmm. but the mental part of it though that play is something you know that starts happening you know uh, much later in a in a race right when you are let's say fresh legs 5 kilometers think whoa this yeah, took a super minute yeah <laughs> now i'm going to finish it in this time i think yeah it should be good <laughs> but it's the race starts much later you know the right. game starts much later yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. amazing amazing so uh, you know what what is your longest run so far and what Uh, what kind of negotiations did you end up doing you know in, <laughs> in such a long run <laughs> okay my longest run has been 78 kilometers right uh, that was a stadium run few months ago in bangalore right um i was preparing for the kardungla challenge mm mm-hmm. uh, kardungla challenge is uh, in ladakh 72 kilometer run wow so uh, and that's at altitude high altitude so i was preparing for that as part of the preparation i said okay i used to prepare on my own and i said okay i need some place to test hmm. that limit you know so get get out there and uh, especially 2019 was when i had done the 50 and i wanted to move to the next thing i was still going slow entertaining ideas and all of that and covid hit hmm. so uh, everything just stopped so it 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 was you know there were no races there was nothing happening yeah. so races are a good thing that way you know you have something to move towards you say ah i signed yeah. up for this now i'm going to get up and move towards that right. prepare for mm-hmm. myself for that so that i see that as a as a dip out there so coming back to this 72k uh that's uh, that's this, the that preparatory run was the 78k run that i did up mm, there mm. so the the my whole thing was not uh, the why i signed up there was to one is to test my you know preparation mm. uh and see how is this how is this uh you know how's my body going to respond at let's say the 50th kilometer 60th kilometer right. and uh, i specifically signed up for the there were two slots the day slot and the evening night slot mm. i signed up for the day slot yeah. because the sun probably is going to be mm. out and in ladakh morning is cold then the sun is going to be out right. it's going to be harsh sun so i need to sort of sort of it you can't you know simulate that same condition out right. it's simulate the altitude nothing yeah. Yeah. but i can sort of at least something is there so i'm going to be running be on your feet mm. that was the uh, key thing that i did right. so 78k was 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 the thing that i nice. hit out yeah. so this ladakh uh, run that 72 km run how did that go it was wonderful mm. uh, i would say that was the best run of my life i should wow. say wow wow uh, why so now uh, so uh, there's a you know it started way back in 2019 Mm-hmm. Uh, that was the first time I was in Ladakh. Mm-hmm. I signed up for the Ladakh Marathon, the full marathon, forty-two k. The forty-two k. And uh, when I, uh, you know, every in in Leh, there is a, it's a small place. So if you need to hang out, the place there is that local. You know, it's 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 like the mall road in Manali. Right. This has got the market out there. Mm-hmm. So you just hang out there. No vehicles. People, you know, just chill out. You know, you got places to eat, food, all of that. and you just sit down and watch life you know it's not moving at a fast pace right. so it's a very nice you know soothing experience out there and when i went there i saw that uh, they had put up arches and things like that the finish line arch mm-hmm. it was like finish line oh kardungla challenge right. and there's a blue carpet and everything mm. i was like oh i didn't know about this and then next i realized it was the next day that the race was happening mm. and first time in ladakh so i was still trying to figure out things then i realized that runners would come and finish their race over there oh. so next day morning 10 o'clock there were some people lined up you know that barricaded that place and 
I stood there at 10 and I saw about 10 10 15 one runner crossing. Right. I was like, "Whoa, 72 kilometers. This is great." And then I stood there and I stood there from 10 in the morning to 5 in the evening. Wow. Till the till wow. the cut off time. Yeah. You know, picked up something to eat there, eating there and stood there. I was fascinated to watch all these endurance athletes finish. Right. I watched a Swiss runner coming, a runner from Switzerland. This guy crosses the finish line and there's a medical tent and they come you know they honor him with the with that thing called the kada and right. then they gave him the medal and everything on the stage everything and they said oh no immediately they said yeah do you want to use the medical tent do you want this is no 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 everything fine and he stood near the finish line like this with his hand on his hip he's standing there i was right there you know very close i could hear him and they came and asked him again would you like to eat something no no i'm waiting for my friend mm. i was like it is as though somebody is waiting for the bus <laughs> he had run 72 he just came stood there and in another 10 minutes his friend came they both hugged and then they just walked up had some breakfast <laughs> i was like whoa <laughs> this is fitness look at the fitness levels out there yeah. how they just came he is not even saying he did not even raise his hands and said oh i did this and whatever he was extremely like like i would say like a monk right you know tall guy and just crossing that and i watched many other runners you know even locals you know people from other states other countries crossing that 72 km mark mm. that was fascinating for me and that is when that seed came i said oh how first of all there's a himalayan mountains i love the mountains and here there's a run 72 kilometers and at what altitude oh they start at 13000 feet go to 17600 feet and then come down to 11000 oh whoa how does it feel to sort of do that and then covid hit them next year so uh, that is when it stayed the seed was right. there at that time yeah and i think uh, last year again i went to ladakh i did the full marathon mm. and uh, when i did the full marathon again i stood there at the finish line mm. and when i watched those runners i said yes i think you need to it's time to do this right. i felt that inside mm. it's not a, it's not the mind mm. it's a whole it's somewhere inside which says i think that this is a run was that it. calling was that say mm. this run is something you need to sign up for right and this year when i went to sign up i took about almost about 2 weeks am i really doing the right thing <laughs> is am i being over ambitious yeah i you know what does it take to prepare for it you know and how will my body endure this now how will i sort of prepare and 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 perform there mm. you know it's not a city run it's a it's a run in the mountains right and and then i said go ahead and register we will see what happens after that mm. registered for it and then the you know that whole preparation started and two days later i said i'm going there anyway i there is also a full marathon a day later mm. should i sign up i said yeah sign up we'll see later <laughs> so i signed up for the 72 and the 42 wow and, and uh, you know september 6th was the 72k and 8th was the 42k mm. and i was like and and even after signing up paying the money i was like am i doing the right thing <laughs> yeah am i oh, stretching myself too much you know again that as i said story of possibility and limitation that's the play right and now it is not the body which is talking about it the mind is playing around with this mm. so first thing was for me was to sort of make friends with that idea of i have signed up now what do i need to do yeah if i do not align the mind and i can i can start building the endurance and the body to prepare for that but my mind has to come along for that yeah. it's a mind mental game yeah i realized that for yeah. sure you know yeah. i've done you know treks in the himalayas long you know long days you know pass crossing days you know i've done plenty of those adventures so i know it is a endurance mental endurance game at mm. after a point mm. so how do i get the mind to work with once you have the mind on board every, the body will follow <laughs> Right. you can train your body you can you can push it you can do all of that but the mind has to come along so i worked on that part and once that was there then i started you know building that building that endurance body endurance uh for that 72 and the 42 beautiful so you you actually did that 72 and the next day 42 how how did that go yeah yeah, yeah so, tell me more about it <laughs> okay so um uh, uh the kardungla race starts at 3 in the morning mm. 
it starts from uh, Khartoum village, which is at 13,000 feet. So, uh, you know, all runners are transported there. We stay in homestays. Uh, we get up at 12.30, 1, 12.30 in the early morning. Mm. By 1 o'clock, you're eating your breakfast. And 3 o'clock is a flag off. Right. And uh, you have to run in the dark, you know, with your headlamps and right. run, walk, whatever you want mm. to do. You know, you can crawl, you can smile, laugh, cry, yeah. anything. <laughs> yeah. And you move all the way up to 70,600 Khardung La, uh -huh. where people go in cars and take pictures and come back right. or take bikes and go and nice, nice yeah. things to do there. But you run all the way up. So that is 32 kilometers moving up mm. from 13,000 to 17,600 feet. And from there, it's a 40 kilometer down all the way to Leh, right. from 17,600 to 11,000 feet, wow. 11,050. Mm -hmm. So you move up 32 and come down 40 kilometers. Right. So that was on the 6th. Right. And uh, the start is at 3 o'clock, the cutoff is at 5. Mm -hmm. They have inter intermediate cutoffs also. Right. So you should have crossed all those intermediate cutoffs. Otherwise, yeah. you it, you'll have to abort the race. Right. And uh, the, the next day, 7th, was there was nothing happening. So 8th was the full marathon. Right. So I ran the full marathon, you know, you know so, ran both mm -hmm. over there. Nice. What, what, what would the, uh, you know, any challenging moments in the race? What, what were the biggest memories from the race, yeah. bo both the races? Yeah. Um, one of the things this time, what I did was my preparation, I felt was uh, on point. It right. was perfect. Yeah. In the sense, um, you know, I built the endurance part of it uh, by, you know, one one was my plan, my runs, my strengthening, all of that, you know, in Bangalore, mm. I did all of that. And then the stadium run really, really helped. Right. So one of the things that, you know, is significant here, what made it a little more challenging for me or something that I think I experimented with also was uh, 2021, I moved to barefoot running. So... Mm. Moving to barefoot running, that was again COVID time. Right. And uh, the Turali side roads were very clean. Mm. No vehicles, nothing, absolutely all shops closed. So clean roads. Right. I had been toying with the idea of running barefoot for a long time. Mm. You know, I'd always find, you know, anytime I find, you know, especially Himalayan treks, trails, I take off the shoes and start walking. Stream crossing, yeah, I right. love it. Yeah. You know, go barefoot, you know, do, you know, you, you, you're, you're with, you're feeling nature, basically, mm. you're experiencing nature. Mm. So I would do a lot of that. And then I said, okay, this is the time to sort of do that. So right. I went out and said, okay, start running, you know. So for me, I didn't have to work on the endurance or the mileage part of it because I was already running. So right. my body is used to running. Mm. Now I have to get used to the barefoot part of it only. So mm. I, and that was the, again, the story that was, I convinced my mind. I said, yeah, I think you're ready, right? Yeah. Just go try it out. Yeah. So I went out and did a 10K, started, started off with a 10K. Mm. And I came back and I felt, yeah, oh, uh, I, my skin was, yeah, it was burning. It was feeling, you know, you know, I, I, I said, okay, three days break. No, nothing, not doing nothing, you know, and I, I at times it felt like, yeah, I had the stones had pricked a bit here and there. So I had to sort of recover. So I nurtured it a bit, you know, applied some creams and, you know, took care of it. Mm. Um, and uh, 15 days, day 15, I ran a 21K barefoot. Right. I said, oh, go run it. And mm. I felt very liberated. Mm. Why I moved to barefoot also, I've been wanting to do that was because I tried different, you know, shoes. Uh, all through the years and especially I don't know whether it's my running form or it's the shoes and things like that I, it after a few months I would start especially longer runs start getting a somewhere there's a shooting pain in the back mm -hmm. you know there's a catch something happening right and I could not attribute it to anything you know I said okay rest 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 strengthen but you go back again something is happening mm. then outside the shoes looks really good mm. and uh, but something i'm not sure what it was right so after moving to barefoot all of those problems vanished mm. completely vanished right. of course i have to take care of where i'm keeping my foot yeah i have to take care of the kind of stretches that i have to run mm. so i i moved to that in 2021 and i said i'm not gone back to shoes after that mm -hmm. so for Khartungla, mm. the one issue is I was ready to, it's a road run, end of the day. I was ready to run barefoot. But the only thing is at three in the morning, it's cold. Right. And I know the mountains, most important thing to sort of make sure, you know, your body loses heat through your fingers. Extremities, yeah. Yeah, fingers, 
toes and the top of your head right you got to keep it covered especially when there is cold mm. and how you manage your body heat is the most important thing there right okay so for me i was like what do i wear do i have to go back to shoes mm. what do i do with it mm. how do i sort of work through this and then i read blogs i tried to read blogs i asked a lot of people who had done kardungla challenge how is it and uh, they said no no it's going to be very cold mm. oh no way don't go barefoot mm. somebody said yeah it's cold but uh, i don't think barefoot is advisable somebody was like shocked oh you're even entertaining the idea mm. and uh, i think i at some point decided let me not risk it i'm mm. preparing to finish 72k mm. whether i run barefoot do not run barefoot the secondary right uh, for me I'm, i'm more of yeah get get to the finish line finish it in right. whatever yeah, stipulated yeah, yeah. time so i went ahead and decided i will look for a pair of shoes which is light i didn't want to use vibrams and things like that but again vibram probably will give protection to the to the sole, sole of the boot but yeah. i needed cover to cover my toes right. so i went for the you know somebody had suggested yeah they were trying to run you know ladakh marathon in uh, aqua shoes sometime they were hmm. planning to do that the decathlon right. aqua shoes right so i said okay let me pick up a pair and see how it works hmm. it's about 500 600 rupees so i went right. picked it up and started doing some practice runs in that felt very odd especially getting back to hmm. you know right. not running barefoot felt very odd yeah and but i tried it and then said how do i sort of uh, you know find out how this works on a longer run hmm. and that's where i ran the stadium run with those shoes okay it was i came back and i think it sort of shifted my form the muscle groups that got engaged were slightly different it took me about almost about a week to recover from mm. that wow you know and because i was using this pair of shoes mm-hmm. and as again um the the lovely part was just about 12 days later um there was a full marathon i had signed up trot right trot came back after covid mm. and this was again you know their their runs are always you know is a scenic, lovely very scenic yeah. roads rolling hills and challenging yeah and i had signed i signed up for it and uh, i was like oh my body is still recovering will i be able to do this now this is a gap of 12 days mm. i have signed up for a 72k and there's a gap of one day and i have to do a 42 right will my body recover right <laughs> what have you know maybe maybe i should i'm over ambitious out there mm-hmm. so these are lot of thoughts right. coming up in the mind yeah, yeah. and uh, and very valid your thoughts i would <laughs> say <laughs> yeah i know yeah and you can't ignore them right because it's yeah i know my body is still recovering and all of that yeah. and uh, i stopped running for those few days i tried to run and then i felt no i think you know i'm i'm straining myself physically i could feel that mm. and i rested completely mm. I went and ran trot. Again I ran barefoot out there. It was raining crazy. Just right. before flag off it rained rain rain for one and a half hours. Mm. Roads are full of water everywhere. You know lovely lush green route. Wa- you know raining people with shoes struggling. I'm running barefoot. I was like oh liberating. <laughs> This is so good. <laughs> I'm soaked but it's absolutely okay. Right. And I feel that really the rain really sort of you know it was it was liberating actually for mm-hmm. me and i felt very confident about the thing mm-hmm. so the way i approach i had to approach this khardungla thing was to say i am going to wear shoes where needed and i'm going to take off the shoes and run barefoot after a point right mm-hmm. so i have to take off the shoes how do i store the shoes how do i hold it how do, what do i do yeah. you know that's additional weight that i'm going to carry right so uh, all of these things started happening and i think uh, i decided okay now i'm sure I won a 78k done and there's a 42k hmm. 12 day gap but I think this is a rolling hill but when you look at Ladakh it's altitude but it's mostly flat except for the last 4 kilometers right. so I went ahead with that plan and said okay now I think I'm pretty much prepared endurance is done and that mental preparation is also done I had to break that so again that's a story of limitation right yeah will do will I be able to run you know with a one day uh, break in Great. between yeah yeah and then I said again that awareness of okay hold on you have not even run the 72k yet <laughs> run you're it, thinking of the next one of that already yeah run the 72k we'll see later yeah so i when i went there that took a huge burden off me hmm. my only thing was okay you're going to go to a 72k 
and what i did was i i you know again i teach storytelling in organizations right and storytelling at three levels how do you use stories to communicate with people connect with people how do you storyify your communication the third level is what are the narratives of the mind how do you work with the that's more deeper that's more important yeah, very yeah. critical yeah. to sort of align your your thinking to set certain outcomes that you want certain performances that you want certain direction that you want to go so i do a lot of that with myself mm. so what i did here was to sort of align myself and build the narrative for the kardungla challenge mm. and the story in my mind constantly for about 3 and a half months was it is not a 72 km run it's a 32 km run mm. 32 km uphill, uphill. Mm. once you go there they're not giving you the medal there mm. they're giving you the medal in the market right <laughs> you go and get it by, before 5 o'clock yeah <laughs> get your medal there yeah. finish this go and get your medal 40 kilometers later <laughs> yeah go whatever pace you want <laughs> so i i sort of you know sort of fragmented that into these pieces and i said hit the 32 because climb is the thing yeah. gaining altitude and uh, your acclimatization is so critical and then once you start getting down that is the other part of the game mm. so uh, i i use that that uh, narrative so very strongly that yeah. it was very strong mm. so for me one was towing the shoes and uh, was the most important thing so once i went to ladakh i i, I always you know every time i go to ladakh or any of the himalayan region that region i trek mm. and uh, i had done it so in 2023 also 2024 too i did a solo 7 day solo trek just myself planned the route mm -hmm. went ahead you know the home stays in between mm -hmm. so i did that thing you know i crossed two high altitude passes right. so that was my acclimatization so my whole strategy was build your strengthening endurance everything in bangalore mm -hmm. test it out right stadium run all of that you know so now you know how your body responds what is happening your body has learned a lot of things through that mm -hmm. now when you go there your only thing is to acclimatize well mm. altitude mm. so that is what i did in fact i saw people many of them were running 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 every day there mm. i wasn't running and that's why i said this was one of the, the i would say the best run i have i've yeah. had mm. uh, uh, especially a long distance run like that right uh, because i felt very comfortable and confident mm. how yeah. many days was the hike and uh, when did uh, you end the hike uh, in relation to to the run itself huh. so i reached there almost about uh, i was supposed to reach there august 15th and mm. there some flight issues and i reached there on august 17th mm. so i was there almost about Two and a two two and a half weeks prior. Right. So and uh, you know in especially Ladakh Marathon and uh, Kardungla Marathon, they issue the bibs at least about eight to ten days prior. Right. Seven to eight days prior, a week or ten days prior. Mm. They mandatorily this time they were extremely rigid about it, saying you have to personally come and pick up the bibs mm. because they want people to acclimate us. acclimatized to the altitude mm -hmm. it's not like your city runs where i can go previous day and just pick up the bib and start running right. next day right. here it's 11050 feet so i have to acclimatize to that place mm. so they en they ensure that people come early so i planned it accordingly so that i am able to finish off the trek for 7 days and then come back pick up the bib and rest eat well rest well mm -hmm. and nothing else you know just just wait for that day right. that's it mm -hmm. you know so that that was my that was my build up and that seven right. days i had planned it so that i had a buffer of couple of days on either side right. so every time i go to ladakh and, and i'm used to the mountain so i don't rush into doing things right. i acclimatize mm -hmm. there sit down three days it's okay even if it's one more day i tune to my body oh mm -hmm. how's my body responding what's happening you know i'm hydrating enough you know am i pushing myself too much now is not the time settle down and then build that whole thing of performance out nice, there nice 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 so you how did you manage to the the shoes uh, thing yes. right how did you yeah. manage that <laughs> yeah so um, uh, what i did was to carry a a, a very light bag Okay. very light bag mm. in which i i you know uh, okay so kardungla challenge what happens is they have uh, uh, three points where you can do changeovers okay um, so you can have drop off bags which are which you deposit and you have these bags available there so i you know you let's say 
you're you're feeling cold you can have an extra jacket at the first point right because you're still climbing the mm. mountains you're still going and gaining altitude right. so it start getting colder up yeah. there based on the weather also you want an extra jacket that's something you can have mm. as you move up then by that time let's say it's the sun is out 8 o'clock 7 o'clock 8 o'clock mm. onwards the sun is out it starts getting sunny so you want to take off certain things and layer off right so there is a, you you put certain things in the bag right. you know there are people who got a different pair of shoes they said well getting up i'm using this pair of shoes now i'm changing shoes so i'm feeling my legs are feeling fresh mm. or i practiced it that way or that, that's their strategy their right, strategy right, yeah for me it was like okay i'm going to be using these shoes till i move to the top mm. and i will see how the weather is mm. because Three four days prior to the race day, also it had snowed at Kardungla top. Oh, so okay. there was some snow and the weather was erratic and mm. things like that. So and uh, I had heard the race director say very clearly: whether it's rain, snows, it's sunny, whatever, there's no change in the timing. Right. Everything cut off times stay. Same. It's the same. There is no compromise or no negotiating on that. You have to. There's an endurance run. We can't change the weather. <laughs> to get through it. <laughs> so. for me i was like yeah snow is not an issue i have trekked in snow so but with this shoes what happens mm. how does it okay i said you don't have to stay there mm. even if there snowed it is only i know that is the area it snows you have to get through that area as quickly as possible so i was prepared for that many people were panicking you know i could hear you know oh, what if it snows and all of that i was like completely at calm mm. i said yeah get across that and once i decided i once i get across that then i'm going to change my remove my shoes and run mm. barefoot but the thing is at at uh, this place called south pulu which was one of the change points uh, where you could change your clothes and drop off things and uh, you know so there i i had kept my light jacket and i thought i'm going to make a change there i'm going to drop the shoes off or maybe carry mm. the shoes and go barefoot in the rest of the route almost about uh, 30 35 kilometers right. i said that 35 kilometers i can i can let me do that mm. it so happened that when i took off my shoes even before after kardungla top there's still 40 kilometers about in another 39 kilometers i took off my shoes mm. stored it in my bag and i started running and uh, i i think i had a bad choice of the bag you know right. so this weight i had not i had not really factored that properly mm. so this started giving a light swing right and if it is a short distance let's say i'm running to the bus it swings it's okay yeah. here i have to run 40 kilometers or 39 kilometers and i can't do it with that yeah. ran about almost about 17 kilometers barefoot that way mm. you know i put it along you know I, i tried to hold it and i did all of that right then i said this is not going to work mm. you know it's really you know hindering my movement too yeah. much it's it's distracting it, me yeah it's, it's not it's not it's the rhythm it makes the rhythm you completely face with you so i said okay wear it hmm. and also after south pulu till almost about 16 kilometers 15 16 kilometers the road there is no road is what i say right it's 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 all Grand. rocky and hmm. you know it's it's like a trail actually right. so i said let me not risk it hmm. if i am entertaining the idea of running a 42 Mm. there's no point trying to risk this so mm. i said okay wear this rather than carry this wear this mm. and i wear it and and ran the rest of the distance so so but the full marathon i ran barefoot okay know, so I, okay yeah. okay is the how um see this swimming shoe decathlon swimming shoe is what you were saying right yes. yeah. is it like a minimal shoe kind of thing yes it's a pretty flattish one very minimal right. and on top is basically yeah uh, if you pour water it will just go in so oh, okay. yeah it will dry okay. quickly also mm. you know it's just extremely minimal cover right yeah so i had carried an extra pair of socks in my bag and all of that that mm. i had prepared for it right. oh, what if it's snow right. the snow socks get wet i don't want to have a cold pair of socks on my thing mm. extra pair of socks you know yeah. so all of these yeah the scenarios had planned for right do you, do you still uh, run barefoot or yes yeah okay yeah. so you know you said uh, you know very interesting uh, for me was that all the niggles and injuries kind of vanished once you started uh, you know going barefoot right that is very encouraging to hear because i am experimenting with minimal shoes okay. not not uh, barefoot barefoot but i have like a minimal shoe which are like 
there is uh, no zero drop and yeah, zero. very flexible right. as good as barefoot is for yes. but you know half a bear okay. right <laughs> <laughs> so uh, is the same thing you know it's an experimentation as such because i have had uh, it band uh, issues i have had uh, you know some uh, back issue uh, last year when i was running and oh. all that right so what would you say are some of the things that one needs to take care of you know getting started on the barefoot transition any any yes. things that uh, yes. people need to uh, be wary of need to keep in mind to making in uh, while making this transition yes now um, so uh, i would i would always you know this is a question i've i've uh, you know re- received many times from many runners so there are two parts to it one is you know getting your body you know uh, acclimatized or used to running yeah the other part is going barefoot right so if you're let us say you want to tackle both you're you're trying to run and run barefoot you're not used to both mm. then you have two problems that you need to hit yep yep so how do you sort of build even even if it's you can run 500 meters it's okay mm. but you're not at zero right you're not starting off mm. so how do you build that base is important mm. so i feel you see you have to go back to childhood you know so we were running many times playing on the field we were playing football cricket whatever we were playing we were yeah. playing barefoot yeah. many times we were running you know all kinds of things mm. it's just that our feet have been habituated to are habituated to comfort mm. so how do you sort of get them you know exposed to the elements again mm. that's one but you want to run also then it's a you know are you building the enough enough amount of base strength right. all of that so i would say you need to sort of take that approach of what do you want to tackle first mm. you can definitely do both but not maybe at the same time is what i would suggest right so you build that base 500 meters or 1 kilometer or 2 kilometers start building that a little bit mm. and do some let's say barefoot walks hmm. start getting your feet acclimatized to you know used to the you know let's say the road or wherever you want to walk hmm. and initially it's a good thing to choose the stretch that you're going to walk right not really uh, advisable to go on to let's say roads where there are commercial establishments right. i've seen this happening where there are commercial establishments there's always glass pieces and metal pieces right. there's always all of these hmm. out there you know let's say it's an empty stretch there's there's probably an industry out there and there's only a wall everything is usually clean unless somebody has thrown trash hmm. but otherwise i have seen this you know you have to choose your stretch so that it it does not you know have you don't risk initially hmm. till you build that layer out there on your skin hmm. it's sort of you know it starts hardening Mm. it's it's like uh, you know how they do in any other sport you know let's say boxing or martial arts or anywhere there's a season their their body parts you know so the same way you have to season your feet mm. and and the and the human system is so adaptable actually mm. you know from how we were at, as as kids playing barefoot how we got uh, you know habituated to shoes and comfort and you know all kinds of things so getting back there yeah the body will adapt Mm. so how do you sort of choose your stretch is very important so it's a safe stretch initially right to till you build that amount of uh, you know that that layer on your feet that strength on in in and in your soul basically mm. once that 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 is you know you, you you can you can actually sense it it takes some time for that to develop right and uh, i would i would i would say that's the best way to sort of approach it and but right. important is to strengthen and uh, build the you know your running mileage a bit right don't if you try to tackle both it you have multiple problems that you're trying to do it's possible right. yeah, yeah but somebody who's a newbie who's trying it trying to do everything at the same time could be an issue yeah you know you need to you know th- that is very beautifully put if you are trying to build your running fitness and as well as you are ba- you know uh, getting into barefoot, barefoot yes that is where uh, yes. you know it's two challenge yes. two different challenges yes that are probably equally difficult right? yes yes that is uh, yeah yes and, and another factor is that uh, you know 
uh, there is this, uh, you know, if let's say I have been running and I have already, I've already got gains. Mm. So uh, I've been running full marathons and or ultras and all of that. Can I give up and come back to, let's say, you know, running just a 1K? Ah. Am I willing to do that? Right. Yeah. That willingness is needed because if you're going to go barefoot, you can't say, oh, I've been running for it, so let me go and run. You might do one run, but then it's going to, the body is going to suffer unnecessarily. Right. So are you ready to sort of, I, I, was, I was ready in COVID. I said, okay, and I've gone to 50 now, go back to the dip. Mm. Starting from there is a lovely journey. I always enjoy that journey. Right. It's a, I would I would I sort of bring you know parallels to uh, the startup world. Mm. If these serial entrepreneurs were there, who's build a startup, build multiple startups, let us say, or one startup, and then you know sell that, sell their stake, come back and start from zero again. Right. Okay. Of course, they're they're they they've made money. Hmm. The risk, what they're calculating the risk and evaluating that, and then coming back and doing an investment in a new business. Hmm. Here, what are you trying to do? You got gains. How do you sort of say, okay, I've got these gains, great. Now I'm going to go down and then build it back again. Right. So, are you able to go through that cycle? Hmm. I think I think the stock market has the same cycle. <laughs> right. Yeah. That yeah. that is a cycle. I would say it's more to do with the psychological aspects of of us hmm. as humans. Am I open to say, yeah, one run I performed well, another one I did not. Hmm. Am I op op you know seeing it in the, in the same way, accepting things in the same way? And tomorrow, if I can't run, yeah, am I okay with it? Right. Am I? Can I slow down? Can I speed up? Hmm. At when I want. Mm. You know, so I think that that letting go is is a critical yeah. aspect of it. That beginner's mindset has to be there has because be there, yeah. you are basically starting from scratch. Even even if you have done ultra marathons yes. with shoes and everything, when you are starting barefoot, you got to you know start from scratch. Yes, so that the yes. the soles of your feet and everything are like getting. Strengthening, Strengthen, yes, in a different way, right? Yes, yeah. yes, and and you 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 can ramp it up quickly mm -hmm. because you've been running, right? But getting back to this, you know, to, yeah. to maybe zero is and or, or starting, you know, the beginner's mindset, as you said, yeah, that's something very critical, right, yeah. right. Beautiful. This has been a super super fun conversation. <laughs> Lovely, yeah. <laughs> then you know. To kind of conclude this session, what are some of the learnings that you have had over this journey of endurance that you would like to share with fellow working athletes? Mm, okay, <laughs> I I believe that um, you know, my experience has been that running is very metaphoric. Mm. Um, you know, it's it's uh, it's been you know it's a it's something you do, or rather, you don't need much effort to do as such. You know, you can enjoy it anywhere, wherever you're going, and it has a huge impact on all aspects of your life. On for me, that has been the experience. Um, just going out for a short run in the morning. Okay, I don't have much time. Maybe just step out for f 500 meters out and back, one kilometer, getting your heart rate up sweating a little bit or even just warming up a bit that itself is a huge game changer for the rest of the day mm -hmm. because you you're you've already you know got some something done for the day that's a great start for the day i i always see that the days i run you know uh, that's where i fitness for me is very critical every day every morning i have a routine i go with that so the days i run i know that you know i'm i'm able to sort of go through the day much much better my the way i'm active the way i'm uh, performing through in other aspects of my life is is very different and it's had a huge impact on that so i would say how do you sort of build that habit you know so that is one thing that i have taken away how do you incorporate that as part of your life you know we do so many things as you know we are creatures of habit mm. habits you know are we bundle everything is a habit basically yeah. so how do you sort of incorporate build this habit oh a short this one so that is one takeaway for that i would i would say a very critical one mm. and as i said it's metaphoric so if i'm able to do this and push myself 
maybe it's in terms of distance maybe it's in terms of time maybe it's in terms of oh i don't have time but let me quickly do this insert the small workout today oh i have time what do i do oh i'm traveling what do i do oh let me go out and run you know let me do a run this morning so that itself has a i would say it extends the benefits extend into other aspects of life it's very metaphoric mm. so i was able to run this so any challenge yeah i think i can i can easily navigate through that right the other part is the the psychological part the mental game the ability to breathe well because you're running your breathing automatically is different you're breathing better you're taking care of your body better so i would say that self love mm. which is very critical right <laughs> so you're able to sort of navigate through the world you're able to connect with people better you're able to express yourself better i think that that itself has a huge impact on your overall well-being mm. and uh, i see that the psychological part of it your mental well-being today we see that you know with with devices everywhere we have so much content always pulling us in different directions you know always vying for our attention mm. taking time for ourselves i think running is something that is that is going to do that right. so that time i'm not on a call i'm not checking things i'm not doing anything you know i'm just with myself and how many opportunities do we get to sort of connect with ourselves i think running is gives you the opportunity very quickly and easily mm. and and i think uh, you know that's a key takeaway that i would say beautiful uh, we know I, i mean really really thankful i had super fun uh, in this conversation I, there are so many takeaways for me especially the narratives that we speak the narrative of the story of possibility versus yeah. the story of limitation is something that you know is struck with me uh it struck a chord with me and uh, l- many other things the mental side of uh, how you kind of negotiate with your mind and also the uh, you know thing you talked about is it the mind or the body right how yeah. do you differentiate yeah. if it is if it is an excuse it is a very the language that you use in your mind can tell you what right. it is right it is, if it is the body or the mind playing tricks a beautiful thank you for uh, you know all your insights and sh- taking time to share your experience with the working adult podcast absolutely venki uh, thank you very much for having me here it's been great uh, having this conversation with you and uh, more power to you you know <laughs> doing an amazing job Thank, thank you. you. Thank you. That was my conversation with Vinod. I hope you enjoyed that. If you are enjoying these podcasts and are finding them useful, please consider supporting the podcast by subscribing to it on YouTube as well as on your favorite podcasting app. It really helps. Thanks again for your continuous support. See you next week with another guest.